It is June the 15th. I'm Chris and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. And we're back with another episode. Jeremiah, I love your glasses. I'm celebrating the <laughs> impending arrival <laughs> of summer. <laughs> and uh, so I thought I'd put on some shades. It's been yeah. very su summer summerish here for like a month at least. So anyway, okay. Um, 3D or let's say yeah the third dimension. We have we have a topic to talk about today which is uh, has been triggered by a new toy that I just acquired and it's not about stereo photography even though well there's a little connection there. So it's 3D with atoms with, ac than, with actual matter. Yes. That's right. Rather than the 3D that is illusory yes. that we covered a few weeks ago. So So yeah, I I got myself a 3D printer. And I was always cautious of getting one because, uh, you know, you, you see people who get these and then all they do is print things for their printer and uh, lots of trinkets and things. And that was, that was the assumption that that would end up in just me creating a lot of, a lot of plastic waste and, and yeah. expensively. Yeah. So does this mean now that you've have it under control or are getting it under control that I can just kind of yes. send you an email going, you know, I could use an adapter from X to Y and I'm not I sure <laughs> the shipping from Germany <laughs> to Los Angeles would would work out, but uh, in theory, yes, of course. So so uh, 3D printing. And of course there's a link to photography, we'll get to that for sure. Um uh, 3D printing is Comes comes in different um, flavors, flavors, varieties, and uh, the one that I'm using is the one that pretty much will probably be in everyone's mind, and that's called FDM fusion, uh, fuse deposition modeling. So it's pretty much you you're printing this sausage of melt molten plastic on top of each other, and layer by layer you build up uh, a 3D model. Okay, here's a question. Sure. Uh, um, once you have your, um, your model built, um, I always notice that it has kind of hard articulated, uh, ridges mm -hmm. around it due to the nature of the material. True. If you took a blowtorch to that, could you smooth it out? Okay. So first of all, what I just, what, what, what I, what I learned in the last few days is that yes, there, there are layers, and you have these what's called layer lines. And if you if you scratch over the over the three D model with your fingernail, you can feel them. But these layers are now really tiny. We're talking a seven eight thousandth of an inch per layer. So that's like five layers on a millimeter, um, which means okay. that that uh, the 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 detail is really mu so much better than I had in mind when, when I last looked at this. So, so follow-up question would be, if I used a viscous paint yes. to move over it, theoretically, sure. it should smooth and fill in those yes. micro ridges. Right? Yes, there are, there are methods to do this. There's methods. I, the blowtorch, well, it's a, it's a therm <laughs> thermoplastic, so it will melt at a, at a specific temperature, of course. That's how it works. Um, I think, well, what people will do is use some primer, spray, spray paint primer to fill these ridges and then mm -hmm. might, might sand it down for something that needs to be really smooth and then paint it. So there are ways to, uh, to get rid of these lines. But honestly, um, I, <laughs> let me, let me show you something here. This is a rubber okay. ducky. This is a little rubber. Let, let me cover my eyes so the camera can focus on that. Um, Almost. Pull it closer to you. A bit. Focus. Fo uh, there you go. <laughs> it's in anyway, focus. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to get closer. Ah, the lens doesn't cooperate. Anyway, this is a mm, third of an inch rubber ducky printed mm -hmm. in black plastic. And the detail is astounding. It really is astounding. There's so much detail in this thing. It's hard to show, but I'll I have a I've uploaded a photo on to our uh, shared photo store. So 
Um, link is in the show notes. Everyone can have a look at that. Is it that is, the extra large <laughs> size that you could print? Um, no, well, I, I, I could print. Okay, so so let's continue. The size of printing um, depends on the printer, of course, how mm -hmm. big the, 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 the print volume is. And what I found out over the last, let's say, a couple of weeks is that 3D, 3D printing has almost completely lost its its nerd exclusivity, right? It, it used to be for a very specific type of person who loves to fiddle with things and mod things and and try out a hundred of different things. This whole thing has turned into a very accessible kind of a plug and play deal. All right, so we're talking, we're talking, um, literally plug it in, download a ready-made model like the rubber duck, um, press print and that's it question the file um are you is it an svg file is what what's the file name there's different 3d file types the one that is most commonly used is called stl okay if and you have an stl file is it you like can print a it. yes is it like a vector file in that if i have a stl file and i use a small tabletop 3D printer, can I take that very same SDI and go like, oh, this is a beautiful maquette or experiment. I want this to be much bigger with yes. more detailed and a stronger material, i.e. Yes. metal it's or whatnot. Vectors. So just send that same file, no ad adaption, adaptation at all, and theoretically I should get a larger version of it. Yep, so, exactly. That right? That's how it works. That's how it works. So no, like it. no, no stair stepping or anything when you when you upsize it. Great. Um, current modern three D printers are also surprisingly silent. So we're talking something that you could easily sit in the same room and and have a have a conversation with someone. It's like at under fifty decibels in a, in in a, I don't know three feet dif uh, distance. So really surprising. And these things have turned amazingly affordable. That's that's the thing that really blew me away because that's the reason I have one now because I just recently saw like um, a sale and we're not being sponsored but the, I got a I got a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, which is right now one hundred ninety nine dollars. Wow, one hundred ninety nine dollars. That's like and ten it, Starbucks. <laughs> and it is it is. Um, Pretty much by everyone referred to as the ideal beginner's 3D printer. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It means that it is easy to use. So um, 200 bucks, you can buy it with a color changer, as in you could print four different colors in one print. Let's say you, you want this little rubber ducky with uh, white eyes. That would be easily doable this way. And then it's like in the bundle, it's like $340. So build volume is seven inches squared, which isn't huge, but it works for most of the things that I, uh, that I need it for. You can also cut up a bigger model and, and have it printed in multiple it. tiles yeah. and then just glue it together. So um, the Lego version. It, yes. Even with pins that will register. So you could, mm -hmm. you could have uh, like a, two parts of it and they will fit nicely together. Um, What's the software like? Fairly easy. So <clears throat> the way this works is that you need a, a 3D model. There's online resources like uh, printables.com or thingiverse.com or makeaworld.com. They have like thousands and thousands of pre-made uh, different 3D models. And uh, you can download them and you drop them into the software that comes with it. And the software is this so-called slicer. So what that does is, as, you, as, as the printer has to print these different layers, the slicer takes that 3D model and slices it up into all these different slices. Let's say your model prints in 500 layers, then you t it, it would internally create 500 slices. Um, pretty much to tell the printer now move the head there squeeze out this much uh, molten plastic move it over there and so on and so on and uh, uh, how long did it take to print that little ducky 
five minutes, maybe. Oh, maybe very, seven minutes. Very fast. We are talking about a fast little printer. So the one, the one thing that uh, every like the hello world of the three D printing world is called a Benchy. It's a little ship, benchmark ship. That's why it's called Benchy, and that has some properties that is kind of tough for three D printers to print. And the Benchy usually prints in an hour or two. That thing. Um, I think the fastest this thing, the fastest this thing can print a decent Benchy is in 15 minutes, which is, Fast. you hear, you hear these, you hear these tales of like, okay, this print took 45 hours. Mm. Um, and, nice. uh, sure. and I had a, and I had a power outage in the middle and then I had to start over <laughs> again. Um, no, this thing is, this thing is quick compared to other printers. Um, and it has it has recovery stuff in it, so even though, uh, during a power outage, it can recover from there. Can, can, can you use uh, lidar uh, to convert to SVG? Um, that would be that would be software outside of the printer. So I mean, but you but, could theoretically, sure. if you circled say a person, sure, and got a three D. Well, basically a version. I'm not going to call it 3D, but you'd got a 360 view, of course, which was convertible into a model. I guess I've there is software online that you that you can throw in a video of you circling around a person, and then it would make that into a bust. Absolutely. So uh -huh. the materials are like yeah, is a, is a plastic material. There are different plastic materials. There's hard plastic, PTG, no. PLA, PETG, these are these are the hard plastics. There's soft, rubbery, urethane plastic, TPU, which so you could make, I don't know, you could, you could print a gasket for your sink, for example. Strong but, enough. But that, strong enough, absolutely. There's translucent um, filaments that you can print from. Um, there's even stuff that looks like metal. And again, countless 3D models for download, art, educational stuff, household stuff. Um, <laughs> You're saying it's a rabbit hole that knows no depth. <laughs> but it, but you get your results really quick. That's the thing. You get it to results really quickly. I mm -hmm. did not have to... I, I unboxed this thing. I plugged it in. I read the quick start guide, which is five pages, and I was off printing. So you don't have to spend four weeks uh, studying a, a whole new thing. You can if you want to. The software allows you to do a lot of things like um, specify exact print speeds and different parameters. You don't have to. You don't have to. This thing is really foolproof and okay. really Print quick. speeds. Print speeds. Is printing like printing on a you know paper printer, right? A Jigway printer. The slower the speed, the finer the detail. Is it the same thing? Or you can is it do depending that. on material? So the, the printer comes with a with a nozzle, um, and that nozzle is by default usually 0.4 millimeters, um, and that kind of determines the print speed, like how much plastic can you squeeze out of that thing in a given time, and how big is it, how how wide is the is the the trail going to be. Um, you can also put a 0 0.2 millimeter nozzle in there, but that will make your printing slower, but at uh, more detail, even though what comes as default is really good. So um, very convinced. And you, you can also kind of double the size and be really fast, but then you'd have layer lines that you would really feel. So um, it really depends on what you want to do. Um, let's see. I'm being very, very tempted, right? <laughs> um, I, again, we're not sponsored. I wish we were because I'm, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm all over this product right now. And um, we, are all, we are beginning to see AI-generated 3D models, of course. Um, there are models, by the way, let me put this on the screen while we talk. Um, there are models that are parametric, as in you can specify uh, different parameters of the model. Like uh, example, simple example, you you have a, I don't know, you have a vacuum cleaner and you want to attach a hose that doesn't fit. So you'd need a, a an adapter of sorts with a, 
a hose diameter on one side and then one on different diameter on the other side. Um, there are uh, parametric things, as in you can open that and put in your diameters and your sizes, and it creates the model for you at that specific size. Or just take a picture of it uploaded to GPT uh, for Omni and say, I need to adapt this. What are the relative sizes? I bet you, you will get this specific at, at this at this point, I think I'm happier happier at, <laughs> with just measuring it and then um, What's that? that's crazy <laughs> punching in the numbers. I trust that more. But then what comes out of the printer is what you're looking for. Um, I've seen I've seen parameter parametric uh, things for like okay you could you could have a I don't know you need a specific sorting tray for your drawer um, then you give it the sizes and how many small compartments you want in there and then it spits out the model and you can print that or um i don't know um shower baskets like your shower you you need a basket to put your soap in and something in there and hang it somewhere and that has a specific size and every shower is different so that you could make one of those parametric and so on it's yeah i don't think that would be the motivating reason to buy the printer because you could probably pick one up for seven dollars or three or four hundred dollars on a printer and the several hours to get a soap dish but why not we could have exactly the one that fits for your for your needs um you can, if you're not into 3D printing, you could also have like your models printed for you at a service. There's like Shapeways or uh, Craft yeah. Cloud or Proto Labs or diff there's like tons of these services out there. Uh, and in a variety of materials, as in they would even print, uh, have a Sinter printer to, to, to return a metal, real metal thing sure. back to you well they're printing houses with 3d printing absolutely. now absolutely and, and, uh, and a lot more and they're of course experimenting with um 3d printing in space that being one of the most useful tools because if something breaks up there in the space station or beyond they will be able to construct that right away on demand and fit it in so um that could be life-saving if it's sort of an oxygen leak or something so i know that there's a lot of work being done on 3d printing <clears throat> in space which has different characteristics obviously in zero gravity i mean but speaking of speed here here is how fast this thing is if you if you look at the speed this is real time on the screen right now that is pretty that is pretty quick and the and the detail again. This is the rubber ducky. Um, this is yeah. a close up of the rubber ducky. Again, this is a qu quarter of an inch maybe in size. Wow. So you can see the layer lines if you look closely. Um, there you go. But if you compare that with the actual size of it, <clears throat> it's hardly visible. So we're we're looking we're looking at at something that has changed dramatically over the last, I don't know, 10 years maybe. And I haven't really looked in 10 years. And it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a bit of a, a bit, Oops. a bit of a, 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 a bit of a surprise to me. So how it's taken a jump. It's it taken has a jump. taken a jump, especially with this specific printer. Again, it's, um, it's right now, many people say that's the, that's the one you want to get if you want to get started. And so, the hurdle is so, very low. So you could, you could see in 10 years, uh, you know, on-demand printing desktop um, in whatever materials you want. A kind of liquid wood, which exists, or a metal, um, hard. Uh, even I'm going to assume some kind of liquid stone that dries, like soapstone, some kind of liquid concrete that hardens. I mean, I, I could see the technology moving forward like that so that materials are not a constraint, but more like a film style where you would select the material for the object you're printing um, and be able to do it at home which I think would be a absolute um, gift for, you know, hobbyists, but also for artists. 
I mean, I could see the of course, here. of course, and uh, and uh, the the whole the whole scene with the with the download sites and the things is one thing. But of course, if you if you want to get more involved, you could use something like a free a free uh, CAD application like Tinkercad mm. in your browser. Mm. Even you don't even have to install anything or or free CAD or Solve Space or whatever. There's a lot of different. Uh, pieces of software out there where you can design your own 3D models. Um, that will be a bit more involved, but you, the world is open to you. So, and with the th with the AI generated 3D geometries, that is going to be even simpler in the future. So we we're looking at something really interesting now. Let's talk photography because how is this related to photography? And I. Um, I went online to, <clears throat> in this case, Thingiverse, which is again one of those websites where you can find a whole bunch of, let me, let me bring this on the screen, where you can find a whole uh, bunch of 3D models of, like, pro including everything, basic trinkets that might be, like, great at collecting dust on your shelves to, to really useful things like, I don't know, a GoPro... Uh, a, a GoPro mount, for example, for a specific purpose that you can't easily buy, um, or we could we can think of lens hoods or uh, lens, lens adapters. Even that, they are precise enough now that you can adapt your old Russian lens to your new fangled mirrorless camera, where you can't find a proper adapter. Um, or a specific shape of a, of a flash diffuser, for example. You can have translucent material, so it's easy to 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 make um, or camera grips or Monica, pinholes. pinholes or pinholes. Monica has um, Monica uh, shoots with a Pentax six seven, and um, a participant on a, on a workshop brought her uh, a three D printed, high quality three D printed grip, like to hold it to to he easier hold it in your hand. Uh, I've seen tripod plates. I've seen <clears throat> printed in 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 a softer rubber material like light seal replacements fit for a specific camera. Like if you know if you have an old camera and the light seal disintegrates, which sometimes they do, um, you could print that. Or um, let's say you have a you have a, a brownie and you need a a spool for it that you can't easily get. So you could print one of those or um, uh, let me enter camera in here just to give you like a, an idea of what the things are that you can find here. Lens cap holders, a tripe, a foldable tripod, print your own. Um, actual cameras, you can find actual cameras in here. Let's see. Or let's say pinhole camera. If you put in pinhole. There's your pinhole cameras. Um, all different sizes, all different. Here, <laughs> here's your stereo <laughs> pinhole camera. 3D oh printed. Uh, stereo pinhole. Now that is a photo club. <laughs> that is a very specific um, gang of nerds. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. And and the and the visual on our screen. This looks very coarse compared to what is now possible with these printers. Okay, this uh, the, the the print lines you see here. You wouldn't see those with the with the modern printer. Um, but yeah, why not make an anamorphic pinhole photo with a three D printed camera? So I'm as good as there. <laughs> it it is amazing the things you can. Um, I'm just starting to think of the things that I might be able to do with this thing. Um, and very often where I would go and try to find something specific somewhere on Amazon or somewhere else. And I'd spend, I don't know, half an hour trying to find the right thing that fits my need. Um, that might be just a couple of clicks away and then an hour later it's printed. Yeah, is there software that will slice and dice and add joining capacity to those? There must be. 
In in which way like, do you mean? So, for example, let's say I'm just going to print a large cube, just mm -hmm. for example, simple, but I can only print say seven yes. inches. So yes. I want I want I have the cube. There it is in CAD or whatever I'm using, and I go. I want to print this in seven inch. Let's say it's twenty one inches across, so I can make a division. And then feed it in, but have the external rods. So yes. You can print six inches with one, a one inch slider. So you just do that and have the software make it precise, female, male, and be able to join it with no problem and yes. do that online or on software. You do this in your software. There is a function to slice something into smaller pieces and to add the pegs in the holes to make it fit again. Yeah. Um, that That's happens amazing. automatically. Oh, and this is a small printer, seven inches uh, squared as a build volume. If you spend a hundred bucks more, you have a much bigger print volume with a, a bigger printer. So it's it really depends on what you need. Um, but this is the, this, this, this is the entry. How, um, how much desk space does it take? Um, let, me bring, let me bring the picture back. Um, that's how much it takes. Let me find. Okay. This is it with a, with a, um, with a color changer. You don't need that. Um, this is it with just, just the printer in by itself. Um, it comes with a little thing where you hang the filament spool to, to its side, so it's connected to it. Um, I don't know, 30, 20, 40 centimeters squared. How much is that? Um, 40 centimeters, 15 inches squared, possibly. Wow. So it's half. not huge. It's small. No, it's not, small. it's not, it's not huge. And practically a party favor. <laughs> sort of, sort of. And again, the multi the multi color oh, printing is yes, look at that. is uh, printing multiple colors with a color changer will drastically ex extend the print time because on the same layer, if you have multiple colors, it needs to change the filament, and um, it's a whole ordeal that the machine does automatically. But it adds a sub substantial print time. So, um, printing something like this, like this map here with the different colors for different for water and the mountains and so on, um, that would probably be an overnight print. Yeah, I mean, that harkens back to, you know, a couple of years ago when we did an episode and I discussed taking kind of uh, images offline of, of uh, satellite photos of mountain ranges that had been converted to uh, very realistic um, bump maps height maps, yes. which I imported um, and then transferred them to Unreal Engine, built um, built a model with Unreal of the Rocky Mountains, exported it as an SVG file. I had a printing shop printed for me with as much detail as possible. And then I gold leafed it and um, as a sculpture. I was going to have it transformed into a... Um, a bronze, uh, but the um, foundry went out of business in COVID, so I did not do that. But but um, that's another way of doing it. So you, you're printing you're printing an object. The object then can be effectively that's the unboxing. Nice. Um, the you know the the printing itself can be just one stage of creating a rubberized or whatever they use for lost wax, all of those things to keep stepping up the materials. So there's, you know, wow, that looks fabulous. So yeah, it's, and, and I've really, again, I have, I have refrained from getting a 3D printer just for, for fear of it being a massive rabbit hole taking up all my time because I'd need to study to learn to be able to do all these things. And that is just not the case with this thing. That's the fun thing. It really is a plug and play thing. So for me, that's, yeah. Do you need it, one of those little chambers that's in back of him or no? Just print no, plein no, no. air. It, it's, it's on, it's on the desk. It, it doesn't print. Some materials will need like an enclosure because you would, um, you would 
have a higher temperature for ABS printing or something. It doesn't do that. It prints, again, some basic materials that are... I print. I printed a little rod to connect something, and I tried to to snap it in half with my hands. I couldn't. So um, those materials are are tough, or tough, mm. tough, tough enough for most applications. So yeah, that's my little recommendation. And if you if you um, are inclined uh, to make things then that is probably wow a good thing that to, to so, at least look at. It looks really fun. That's my main number one thing. Looks like fun. Yeah, it is. And I, I have I haven't I haven't spent a lot of time fiddling. That's the nice thing. So um there you go. That is my little recommendation. So there's a there's a example of a technology that is not only useful, but inspirational. So the thing is sitting there staring at you and you go, what can I do with it? How can I use it to push the boundaries of it? How can I transform a 3D model that I picked up online to something extraordinary? How I can blend things, how I can make a toy for a child. Um, or even build something bigger with pieces of it, a.k.a. the Lego universe or the log universe where you're printing, what were those called, those something logs? Some people will remember. The uh, where, you know, kids used to get a, a, a chest of logs and they could build a log cabin or a big building. You mean, you mean the bigger ones? We had we had them here. The Legos were the small ones and the bigger ones were called Duplos. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But you could do your own. Um, like a Meccano set of old where you print out all of the pieces and then you actually build it. Um, I think these are really, really fun things and very inspirational. And I'd say really good for kids yes yes and yes and and of course the 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 whole integration with photography again the things i listed now were mostly like accessories to your camera and so on but you used it for for art as in you printed those little landscapes and then made a mold of that and then used uh, and filled it with yeah. bronze and then took that again so there are like Endless possibilities. Well, if I took a photo, just a, a simple photo, and created a bump map, whether I'm using Leopix, mm -hmm. which we've talked about, or Photoshop. I mean, there's multiple ways of creating depth. Yes. Uh, and uh, so this is a, um, well, not a three-dimensional um, piece. It may be two-dimensional that, has a protrusion of 3D, if you know what I mean. So it, it's not 360, but let's say 180. And then, so I have a photograph. I take a bump map of it. I know or what I make you're a bump map. Uh, and then I create an SVG and I have a framed picture of something coming out of the picture printed on. Here is, uh, mm -hmm. here is um, something that's called a litho lith lithophane, which is exactly that we're talking yeah. about a printed um picture with the the dark parts being thicker than the bright parts and it's translucent and then you can um put it in front of a window or something and end up with uh with a translucent <laughs> thing with which only reveals itself when light shines through it so there you go it's a, just a yet another lithophane you know that's a new term Right? Uh, lovely. And uh, the printers, as you can see, can capture a lot of detail in these yeah. things. So. so there's a fusion of there, technology. And new, 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 to new tools will inevitably yield uh, new kinds of art, new approaches to making art. So as it always has. I mean, yes. you know, we can go back to the Flemish, right? Who really perfected oil paint and weaving. So you had canvas and a viscous paint that was easily manipulated on that canvas. 
in 1600, and uh, boom, you have Flemish painting, a sense of new realism. That was all technology-based in Holland. They were very focused on science and development of technologies, and that yielded amazing new art. So always when uh, materials kind of emerge and science um, allows the kind of um, development of materials that inevitably, uh, you know, creates a condition to make uh, amazing abstracted or realistic or kind of pushing the limits of what art can be because it doesn't exist in a vacuum. True. Um, so that's this is exciting, I think. Uh, uh, inexpensive tabletop printer. Yep, absolutely. So there you go. Here's like your, it. Here's your new toy. Um, I like it. My pick of the week is, of course, then the, the website where <laughs> you can buy it. Again, <laughs> not sponsored. We're not getting anything for that. They um, they should Wish we were, us. but... <laughs> Wish we were, but um, yeah, it's, it's Bamboo Labs. BambooLab.com. B-A-M-B-U-L-A-B.com. Love and it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's the go-to right now. So that is my pick of the week. And what did you bring us? My pick of the week is a Chroma. Um, these are cameras. If you go visit this particular site, they make all manner of cameras. Uh, they don't say specifically, but I do believe these are all 3D printed. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so there's a there's a 4x5. Um, just looking at the pictures, it looks... looks as if it was 3D printed, for sure. Which again, it's not a it's not a blemish. It's the way to manufacture things these days, especially especially small runs of things. That's that's the interesting thing. The the um, you can manufacture like five of well, something or yeah, one of something on, doing it's it. It's on demand. I mean, they just say one to two weeks, right? So that you order it and they they print it. And there's all kinds of cameras that are very specific from pinholes 35 millimeter um you know 120 uh with with lens adapters you know galore this is one um really it's a nice little rabbit hole chroma uh and they have all kinds of filter adapters and um stumbled across it and and just uh, was quite dazzled by the innovation of something Simple, and yet you see uh, relatively, re I say relatively inexpensive, um, you know, for a wide camera. This is sort of a Linhoff. <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 takes, it takes a lot of like, um, it, it takes skill to design something like that and make it work, especially with an existing lens, because that is... Uh, a lens that um, is not 3D printed, even though you probably could print the the, sure. the exterior of the lens and um, and build it. But this is a Schneider Kreuznach lens um, that will certainly have great great image quality. Well, if you remember, uh, you know, telescopes were invented, you know, in 1608 again back to Holland. Uh, Lippershey, I think, one. Um, and, and he, he was a, a, uh, lens grinder, right? He, he did lenses for all kinds of things. And he had an idea to gr grind a convex and concave lens, put them in a tube. And all of a sudden, whoa, the moon was in his face. And that's how astronomy, um, was born really. And just a shameless plug, uh, all based on my new work and my new show that's coming up in a month. Month. There we go. July we 13th go. here, my solo show. But um, those kinds of innovations of just going, well, I have I have a lens here from an old camera. I took out the glass and I have another one and I want to mount them so that they stay sharp or they're, they're either fixed focus or even adjustable focus and experiment with kind of spare parts in creating new looks, new forms and an experiment exploration of photography 
and you take the kind of old school manufacturing using those kind of parts and you add that to some of the more exciting digital capture available for us and you can get some things that have never been seen before. So that's exciting. So if anyone, any one of our listeners has experience with that or is Put your pictures up that, and let's uh, see them. Join our Discord. Let's let's see what you have done or what you will do or what your plans are. I'd love to discuss a few of these things in on our Discord. We have a um, d different channels for different parts of that, like a tech channel and an arts channel and a showcase channel and so on. So um, that would probably be the right place. All right, let me cue the outro music. So um, the third dimension, the different. Thing. I'm I'm really excited about this new Perfect. this new I, I I I thought I would call it like toy, but it's, it's more than a it's toy. A That's the thing. It it I used to call these things toys, but it's not. It's more. it's a tool that you approach with the excitement of a child who opens a toy, and then you end up with. Cool a tool? <laughs> stuff, with cool stuff and uh, new possibilities. All right. We'll be back soon, everyone. Take care and uh, see you in a week. Bye now. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 